ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट मॉर्निंग न्यूज Good morning. I am Saira Mujtaba. The headlines: Bimstek countries to adopt Kathmandu Declaration today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to hold talks with leaders of Thailand, Myanmar, Bhutan, and Nepal. Shipping Ministry signs new wage agreement benefiting 1 lakh 35,000 port and dock workers and pensioners. Income tax returns filed so far this year register 60% rise compared to corresponding period last year. Center sends medical teams to flood ravaged Kerala. Lost LPG cylinders to be replaced at subsidized rates. And in Asian Games, Indian women's hockey team to take on Japan in final. Boxer Amit Panghal and Vikas Krishan to play the semi-final bout. The fourth Bimstek summit will conclude in Kathmandu today. The leaders of seven member states, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Myanmar, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Thailand, will adopt the Kathmandu Declaration. An MOU on establishment of Bimstek Grid Interconnection will also be signed. Indian Foreign Secretary Vijay Gokhale has said that outcome of the summit is expected to set the Bimstek on a firm institutional foundation with a very focused and reoriented directions for the future. On the sidelines of the summit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will have bilateral meetings with the leaders of Thailand, Myanmar, and Bhutan. In the evening, Mr. Modi will have talks with his Nepalese counterpart K P Sharma Oli. Our correspondent reports that both the leaders will also jointly inaugurate the Nepal Bharat Maitri Pashupati Dharmshala in the famous Pashupati Nath Temple premises. Nepal Bharat Maitri Pashupati Dharmshala has been constructed with the government of India's assistance of 20 crore Nepali rupees. The three-story building has 82 rooms and around 400 beds. It also has a common kitchen, dining hall, a library, and a hall for religious purposes. The building is equipped with the water treatment plant and solar heater. The Dharmshala will cater to the needs of devotees visiting Holy Pashupati Nath Temple for the pilgrimage. Situated in the heart of Kathmandu city, the Dharmshala would be an another milestone in strengthening age-old cultural and religious ties between. India and Nepal Rajkumar AIR News Kathmandu Back home shipping ministry has signed a new wage agreement benefiting 135000 port and dock workers and pensioners The agreement was signed by shipping ministry port officials and workers federation in Mumbai yesterday The new patch will provide 10.6% wage hike to workers and pensioners The wage settlement covers group C and D employees benefiting at least 32000 workers and 1 lakh pensioners in 12 major ports across the country. The workers and pensioners will get this benefit for a period of 5 years beginning January 2017. The total financial implication of the settlement for all the major ports for serving and pensioners is likely to be about 560 crore rupees per annum. The income tax return filed this year so far has crossed the 5 crore mark a rise of over 60% compared with filings a year ago officials said this points to improved compliance which augurs well for government finances today is the last day for filing the tax returns by salaried individuals and those with business or professional income without the need for audit in flood affected kerala the central board of direct taxes has extended the due date till 15th of september The final number of tax filers are likely to rise further given the usual last minute scramble. More than 20 lakh returns were filed yesterday. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said yesterday that demonetization fulfilled the objective of making India a tax compliant society. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has said that India has potential to be among top 3 economies of the world in the coming decades. The minister said this while inaugurating the new office of the Competition Commission of India in New Delhi yesterday. He said other economies in the world are growing at a much lesser rate while the size of India's economy is enlarging. Union Human Resource Development Minister Prakash Javadekar has launched the Innovation Cell and Atal Ranking of Institutions on Innovation Achievements in New Delhi. The Innovation Cell, an, initi- an initiative of the ministry, has been established at the premises of All India Council for Technical Education with a view to foster the culture of innovation in all higher education institutions across the country. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Javadekar stressed the need to create innovation culture. He said for this the government is encouraging the institutions to create innovation club in their campuses. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock follow us on our Twitter handle at @airnewsalerts
The center has sent medical teams to flood ravaged Kerala. 30 specialist doctors, 20 general duty medical officers and 40 Malayalam speaking nurses will arrive in the state today. Union Health Minister J.P. Nadda reviewed the flood relief measures with senior officials in New Delhi yesterday. An official release said Mr. Nadda also spoke to Kerala Health Minister K.K. Sharaja and assured her of the continued support of his ministry in the ongoing flood relief measures. Meanwhile, Petroleum Minister Dharmin Pradhan has approved a proposal to replace LPG cylinders at a subsidized rate which were lost during the recent floods. Speaking to AIR, Mr. Pradhan said he has directed oil oil companies to cooperate with consumers in this hour of crisis. Those who have lost their LPG cylinder in the flood, they will be replaced by those who are coming from the BPL category. If they will be purchased at 200 rupees, they will be getting around 1200 rupees of rebate. And those who are APL category people, they have to pay 1200 rupees. They will get a rebate of 200 to 300. This beneficiary has to be identified by local government, Kerala government. Women and Child Development Minister Menika Gandhi and Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath will inaugurate the largest ever facility for widows, Krishna Kutir, at Vrindavan today. Our correspondent reports that this special home for 1,000 widows set up by the Women and Child Development Ministry under the Swadhar Grihi scheme of the ministry is the largest ever facility of its kind created by a government organization. Krishna Kutir has been constructed on 1.4 hectares of land through National Building Construction Corporation, NBCC, at a cost of 57.48 crore rupees. It has facilities of ramps, lifts, and other amenities for meeting the requirement of senior citizens and persons with special challenges. On this occasion, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath will also lay foundation stone of various projects in Mathura worth 300 crores, including Asia's largest park. The proposed park will be developed in an area of 400 acres near Kali in Vrindavan with a purpose to boost tourism in the state. Kushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. In Madhya Pradesh, in a first of its kind initiative, Milbache, an interactive program between schools and society is being organized in all government schools of the state today. Our correspondent reports that more than 80,000 volunteers have expressed their desire to give gifts to the schools like books or any other gifts which will be useful for the students. Mil Bache Madhya Pradesh program is being organized in the state for multidimensional development of children through language skill upgradation, developing interest in understanding and other co-curricular activities in government schools. Over 2 lakh volunteers who have been registered for include 820 engineers, 843 doctors, 36,000 employees of private sector, 19,000 public representatives and around 45,000 government employees and officers. Volunteers will read out one chapter of any book from the school library during the program. The student Presents will be asked questions and will be introduced to the art of conversation. Sanjeev Sharma, AIA News, Bhopal. In the Barak Valley of Assam, four Jan Oshadi Kendra have been opened under the Pradhan Mantri Jan Oshadi scheme to provide quality medicines at affordable prices. While three centers are in Silchar, one is in Karim Ganj. Here is a ground report from our Silchar correspondent. The benefits of Pradhan Mantri Jan Oshadi scheme are now reaching the backward areas of Assam. People are showing enthusiasm about the scheme. Pooja Majumdar, who runs a Jan Oshadi center in Silchar, says she wants that these centers are opened in every district. All of us are taking medicines here. They are also very happy because the price is 150 rupees in the outside. It is only 15 rupees or 20 rupees at the price. It is very useful for the poor people. I want to that this scheme will open in every place in Silchar. Venurai of Silchar, who got the medicines at less than one-fourth of the market price, expressed his happiness. प्रधान मंत्री जनसाधारण में जो मेडिसिन फार्मेसी खुला है इसमें हम लोग को गरीब को बहुत फायदा होता है बाजार में पचास रुपया और यहाँ में दो सौ रुपया मिलता है हम बहुत आभारी है द ग्रोइंग पॉपुलैरिटी ऑफ द जन औषधि सेंटर्स प्रूव दैट अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ मेडिसिन एट अफोर्डेबल प्राइसिस इज द डिमांड ऑफ द टाइम एंड इट नीड्स टू बी एक्सपेंडेड विद रितेश पाठक रिपोर्ट फ्रॉम सिलचर गुलशन रावत ए न्यूज Vice President Venkaya Naidu has stressed the need for providing quality facilities like education, health, infrastructure to rural areas to bridge the gap between urban and rural India. He said this after inaugurating the second Rural Innovator Startup Conclave organized by the National Institute of Rural Development and Panchayat Raj in Hyderabad. 
Mr. Naidu advised governments, policy makers, political parties, scientists and media to show partiality for rural areas. And now, news from the 18th Asian Games being held in Indonesia. After Indian athletes signed off the athletics event yesterday with 19 medals, today all eyes will be on Indian women's hockey team, who are in the final of the Games after 20 years. The extraordinary Indian Eves will look to end a long 36-year wait when they will take on Japan in the gold match class today. All India Radio will broadcast live commentary on the match from 6.25 p.m. onwards. A victory today will not only add an Asiad gold in women's hockey after 1982, but also dilute the fans' disappointment after the hope of a gold from the men's team ended last evening. They will now face Pakistan in the bronze medal playoff tomorrow. In boxing, Vikas Kishan and Amit Panghal will play their semi-final bout in their respective weight categories. Vikas and Amit have already guaranteed a podium finish. In scores, the men's team will face Hong Kong while women's team will take on Malaysia in the semi-finals. In table tennis, paddlers Saras Kamal and Manika Batra will also look to advance in the quarterfinals of the singles events. Athletics event ended yesterday with 7 gold, 10 silver and 2 bronze, the country's best performance since 1978. India also surpassed its previous edition's overall tally of 57 by making it 59 with 2 more days of the competition left. With 13 gold, 21 silver and 25 bronze, India is currently 8th in the medals tally. Hituraj, Sports Desk. In cricket, India were 19 for no loss at Stumps last night after dismissing host England for 246 in their first innings on the opening day of the fourth test at Southampton. For India, Jasprit Bumrah claimed three wickets while Mohammad Shami, Ishan Sharma and R. Rashman got two wickets each and Hardik Pandya won. England have won the first two tests and India the third one. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Anuja Kumar. Thank you, Saira. Different papers carry different stories today, while some have given prominence to the apex court's reprieve to the activists having alleged Maoist links by granting them house arrest. Others note the demonetization debate between the government and the opposition. Note ban a scam, not a mistake, says Rahul, writes Hindustan Times, with another counter-headline quoting Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, economy formalized, tax base widened. The war of words between the two is also given traction by the DNA. The paper quotes Finance Minister Demo led to higher tax mop-up, while Rahul Gandhi's quote makes another headline, Move to help big businesses. The nationwide raid on activists for having alleged Maoist links is also covered by the press after the Supreme Court issued a directive for their house arrest. Three activists reach home a day after SC order, notes the Asian Age. All papers take note of India's stupendous performance in the Asian Games. The Indian Express writes, Johnson's silver cloud has a gold lining, with Jensen Johnson winning the gold, while the pioneer says, Johnson propels India on best track ever at Asiad. The Times of India notes the women's 4 into 400 meter relay team's feat, winning the day's second gold for India. In good news for conservationists, the Hindu reports the Nilgiri Tahir climbed the population charts. However, the daily adds the species remains under threat from invasive plants. After an SOS from Air India that it doesn't have funds to service debt, the government is set to infuse 980 crore rupees as equity in the carrier next week. The Economic Times writes government to put 980 crore into Air India next week. And finally, good news for late risers and those skipping early breakfast. The Hindu reports of a study that says late breakfast could help in losing weight as it affects quantity of overall food intake. Struggling to cut down your body? Have a late breakfast. And with that, it's back to you, Saira. Thanks, Anuja. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Bimstek countries to adopt Kathmandu Declaration today. Prime Minister Modi to hold talks with leaders of Thailand, Myanmar, Bhutan and Nepal. Shipping Ministry signs new wage agreement benefiting 1,35,000 port and dock workers. Income tax returns filed so far this year registered 60% rise compared to corresponding period last year. Centre sends medical teams to flood ravaged Kerala. Lost LPG cylinders to be also replaced at subsidised rates. And in Asian Games, Indian women's hockey team to take on Japan in final. Boxer Amit Panghal and Vikas Krishan to play the semi-final bout. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a great day. <laughs> 